Bivio Penguins. So today we are going to be talking about the 2010 um, number two. It's the Enzyme Lab FRQ question. Um, and so they tell you that we've got this experiment and we're going to conduct the measure of reaction rate of human salivary enzyme um, amylase. So we have 10 milliliters of starch solution and one milliliter of amylase solution placed in this test tube. And the test tube is then inverted so that we can mix it and it's incubated. They tell you the amount of product that's formed. So as you see right here, we've got the amount of maltose. So you see at zero minutes, we've got, of course, zero. Um, and it increases in the minutes and then increases. And you're going to see it kind of levels off a little bit right here. So the first question we're asked is to graph the data on the axis provided. Well, based on the data that we see, we've got a linear progression, right? So we go 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes. Um, so we know this is going to be some type of line graph in which we're going to have the time on the x-axis and the maltose concentration on the y-axis, making sure that you include your units and you appropriately scale it. So that's what they're going to look for in our graph. Did we have the correct orientation where we have the independent variable being time on uh, the x-axis and the dependent variable of maltose being on the y-axis? Do we have the correct display of units and intervals? So do we um, have you know, minutes in the time and then uh, micromolar in the, the maltose concentration? And then did we correctly graph our points? Now, um, later on in part C, it's going to ask you to do something else to your graph. So what we're really looking at is this line right here, this like one milliliter of amylase. Um, so we're seeing that it kind of increases steeply here and then it kind of levels off. So it then asks us to calculate the rate of the reaction. Whenever you're asked to do the rate of a reaction, that's always talking about slope. So the formula for slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x2, 1. So we're going to take two points, specifically the 0 point and the 30 point, because it tells us we're calculating the rate between 0 and 30 minutes. So my y2 is going to be my second y value. My y1 will be my first y value. And my x2 will be my second x value. And my x1 will be my first x value. If we go ahead and sub those into the equation, that gives us 10 points. 4 over 30, which then calculates to be 0.3467. And don't forget your units. And so that was uh, what was actually on the formula, like on the uh, scoring guideline. Did you have the correct setup and the correct calculation? And then did you have units? This was back before you were allowed a calculator on the exam. So you're going to notice that they kind of allowed you just to, to do the correct setup. Um, nowadays, you really would have to do that full calculation because of the fact that if it's asking you to calculate, it wants that final value. And they know you have a calculator to do the calculation. So B says to explain why a change in the reaction rate was observed after 30 minutes. So you see here that at 30 minutes, um, it starts to kind of level off. So we need to try to figure out, well, why is it leveling off? Well, enzymes are workhorses. They're going to keep working forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. They'll never stop until they reach a um, something that denatures them. So like a pH or a temperature change that, of course, causes the enzyme to unravel. So why would it slow down? Well, we see here that we've got a certain amount of our reactant, okay? So we've got that um, amylase, sorry, the amylase, sorry, the, um, the starch, um, and the amylase is breaking down that starch into that maltose, which is what we're seeing here with that increase of concentration. So as the reaction continues going, I'm going to see a decrease in the amount of starch that I have and an increase in the amount of maltose. By having the decrease in starch, that means there's less of the reactant for my enzyme to bind with, which means that we're going to see product inhibition. The product is going to bind to the active site and inhibit the ability for our reactant or our substrate to bind. Um, and so that's what we see here is that we're running out of substrate. We're running out of um, that we're seeing the product inhibition. So you can see the three options you could have put here. Rate slows due to substrate concentration decline. Our substrate is being used. The enzyme becomes inactive after 30 minutes. You could just talk about that it just uh, loses its activity. Or you talk about that product inhibition where the product is coming, binding, um, and inhibiting the reaction. So this is what a student said, right? They talked about the change was observed after 30 minutes because the reaction rate levels off after 30 minutes. So they got the point there. Um, they then proceed to go on and explain about how that the starch had been exhausted by the enzyme. Um, and so that means that there's going to be less starch available for the reaction. So part C then says to draw and label another line on the graph to predict the results if the amylase was doubled. So if I have twice as much enzyme, theoretically, you would expect there to be 
twice as much reaction taking place at the beginning. And so you see a doubling of the reaction rate. Um, in addition, you could also see that it would run out of its substrate sooner, and so you would see it level off sooner. Um, and so the two options you could have put here, um, so our original data is right here, um, and so you can see it you know, increases a lot faster, but then it levels off faster, or we just see a doubling up of the entire um, line. And so they wanted you to make a prediction. Okay, so whenever you see a prediction question on the exam, just go ahead and try something. Okay, um, maybe you're right, and maybe you can go ahead and get a, a an accidental point. Um, but you should never just give up. Like, go ahead, just try something. Um, so draw a line. Um, so it says, did you draw and label the new line with the appropriate prediction? Um, if it was one, you explained it by talking about the substrate was being consumed more quickly because twice as much enzyme was present, um, or talking about that there was more product form because you had twice as much of the enzyme. Um, so you had to give some type of explanation for it. And so here was the student. They uh, drew the graph. Uh, I think that would be line two. No, sorry, that's line one because um, it doubled up faster and then it kind of leveled off. Um, and then their explanation was that because of the fact that we had twice as much, starch would be broken down twice as much during the first 10 minutes. Um, and then because the concentration would then decrease, would double. Um, and so we're going to see the levels off much sooner because of the fact that the substrate would be exhausted sooner. Okay. Um, and so that was what they were looking for there. Um, we then see that we are identifying two environmental factors. So there's all kinds of things that can denature our enzyme. But there's really two that we want to focus on. You always want to think about pH. If you go too high or too low above your optimal pH range, it is always going to denature your enzyme. In addition, we think about temperature. If temperature gets too low, the reaction rate is going to slow down because of a decrease in our kinetic energy. If it has a little bit of an increase in temperature, reaction rate will increase because we see an increase in our kinetic energy. It causes there to be an increase in the collision of the particles, um, which then, of course, leads to increase in the reaction. But if it gets too hot, it causes breaking of the different bonds within our protein because remember enzymes are proteins. Um, and so when they break, it's going to cause the um, enzyme, the protein to denature or unravel. Um, and so it will lose its functionality. It won't be able to work anymore. Um, so the different options you put, uh, put here, you could have talked about temperature, pH, salinity. You could talk about in inhibitors like competitive inhibitors or non competitive inhibitors. Remembering that competitive inhibitors bind to the reaction site, um, sorry, the active site. Non-competitive inhibitors bind to a different site and then are then going to um, change the shape, inhibiting the um, substrate from binding. You talk about stirring and mixing, pressure, oxygen, and light were the different options that they had given you here. And then you just had to discuss that. So the student talked about temperature, and then they said that as temperature increases, we're going to see that they move around faster, causing them to collide and form the enzyme substrate complex, which then, of course, leads to a product. They also talk about that if it gets too high, that causes the proteins to become denatured, um, and then it will be in ineffective. They then go on to talk about their second one. Okay, so notice here that they say another. That is demonstrating to the reader, okay, I've already said one. This is my next one. So it's important for us to clearly label for the readers which one's our first, which one's our second, so you don't accidentally use one of those points. Um, so another environmental factor that can affect the rate of the enzyme is the pH of the environment. Certain enzymes work better at specific pHs and may not work at others due to denaturation. So he's talking about um, how it denatures. So I hope that that was helpful. And remember, AP Bio Penguins are dressed for success. Bye, y'all. Stop recording.